We, of course, are very proud that Sunday morning will be marking its 42nd birthday next month. But we have to admit that when it comes to longevity, the Public Broadcasting Service has us beat. Hence, this salute to PBS at 50. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Shows everybody knows. Can you tell me how to get? It's amazing how many of them have been on PBS, the public broadcasting service. People we all know, too. This is chicken and red wine. Julia Child was the very first person viewers saw when PBS went on the air. Today, on the French Chef. Fast forward 50 years for a birthday look at what we think we know about PBS and what maybe we don't. What splendid memories we're sharing tonight, you and I. On First, PBS. there's that PBS the fact of life, the pledge drive. I'm talking to France. Your local public television station needs... Tell me, you don't get a peculiar pleasure. Out of watching something like this. Here. Thank you very much for not uh, turning me into a Dalek or killing me or anything you like that. You are welcome and donate, donate. The nation's 350 PBS stations couldn't survive without the money raised. I'm going to stop the subsidy to PBS. I'm going to stop other things. I like PBS. I love Big Bird. What gets more attention is the federal funding, currently $450 million a year, or about $1.35 per taxpayer, that some politicians over and over have tried and failed to zero out. Government funding, for example, represents 15%. That's 1-5% of the funding that comes into public television. That money actually goes to our stations. Paula Kerger is president and CEO of PBS. Some of our stations in smaller parts of the country, the percentage of their budget that is government money is, is closer to 40 or 50 percent. In, in, in bigger cities, it may be 6 or 7 percent. Good evening, everyone. I am Zach Buckner, and I'm your host. WCTE in Cookville, Tennessee, gets $600,000, nearly a third of its annual budget. That is our very foundation. That is the lifeline for this station. Becky Magura heads WCTE. Hi, and thank you so much. One of around 80 similar rural PBS stations. It serves the Upper Cumberland, 14 counties between Nashville and Knoxville. Beautiful country, but isolated and impoverished. When friends visit from Washington, D.C. or Los Angeles, they'll drive in and say, where are the other TV stations? And I'll say, well, there are no other TV stations. We're it for 80 miles. Mogura grew up in Cookville. She started at WCTE as that station's first student intern and never left. She's run cameras and sound, hosted shows. I'm 81. You're 81? Wow. I'm 73. I would not have known that. <laughs> and once when sisters Frankie and Patricia Murphy couldn't get their TV to work. This is remarkable. Now, last time I was here, it was up in a tree. Yeah. She even drove out and fixed their antenna for them. We're just forsaken. You know, that's what I take it. We're forsaken. We're just on into the ridge and nobody cares. They're grateful for whatever WCTE puts on, living in a region trapped in the digital divide with spotty cell service and no internet. You can go and buy a dish, but you can't hardly get no signals over in Europe. It clouds up. Listen to what Roy Sells watches on WCTE. Front lines. Y'all watch nature a lot. I like the news hour. They give you a view of what's going on everywhere. The Allies would have to... And he likes Ken Burns' documentaries. I ain't never met him, but he, he seemed like a down-to-earth guy, you know. Seemed like he's got a great career ahead of him. A great career indeed. Hemingway was a writer who happened to be American. If there's one name that's synonymous with PBS, it's Ken Burns. 
I see you all working together. Yes, this represents sort of two and a half editing teams. We visited him in New Hampshire before COVID. For nearly four decades, he's been producing blockbuster, award-winning documentaries for PBS. 29 so far, with another decade's worth in the works. The principal one here for the time being is on Ernest Hemingway, a three-part, six-hour series. Very, very complicated. It's like he changed all the furniture in the room. With audiences averaging 40 million for his films, Ken Burns, probably more than any other American, is shaping our understanding of history. Adults are watching, but if it's a school day, so are kids. PBS, we're in every classroom in the country. We know how to reach every classroom in the country, and we do. And during COVID, arguably more important than ever. Hey, dear, sweet, beautiful, brilliant students here. As PBS and its member stations help school systems deliver remote learning to millions of students. We here learning. Well, this sentence has letters. On PBS, even the cartoons are educational. Maybe I can read it. Will you help me? This is Studio One, if you look at the sign right there. They were like a magic door for 27-year-old Dre Reed, growing up poor in southwest Philadelphia, watching PBS station WHYY, dreaming of making cartoons himself. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle, but it's there. PBS, no exaggeration, changed his life. I would watch PBS kids like religiously all the cartoons until cartoons went off. And then I kept watching before I knew it by the age of you know, 12, I could probably have a conversation with someone like in their 50s on topics that they find interesting. When he was in high school, one of his teachers recommended him for an after school program at WHYY. You mean the same place where I watch like PBS kids? And I was, and it was like, uh, Yes, calm down, but yes, because of the, the work that I, you know, did with WHYY, it gave me a president scholarship, and then I was able to, you know, pursue my dream of animation. This is one of those, wait, there's more stories. All right, guys, I want you to draw this with me. Now, Dre Reed works at WHYY, teaching video production in more than 40 schools. Remember, you can draw anything in basic shapes. And lately, during COVID, online drawing classes sponsored by the station. Now, those are the basic shapes. Now y'all feel confident that y'all can draw anything, right? If PBS was a person, I would like to be that person for another person. It doesn't have to be a kid. It doesn't have to be a student. What PBS did was like it opened up a world to me to think about things in a, in a new way. Birthday testimonials don't get much better than that. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you.